Hello and welcome aboard the Galant Says Podcast. It is Tuesday, March 12th of 2024, and what a difference 24 hours can make for Houston Texans fans. No. Were you impatient or mad yesterday, even though this team has put together before what they did today? A really impressive last calendar year, going back to free agency in 2023, then the 2023 NFL draft, which they won, then the regular season with a 10 and 7 AFC South championship and an advancement to the second round of the playoffs. Were you mad? Were you a mad little panda? I suppose pandas don't get mad, they probably just get annoyed. When there's no bamboo being fed to them. But you didn't get your bamboo. No. Nope, you wanted a big splash signing. And guess what? Nick Casario delivered and then some today. The big deal that went down just about an hour and a half ago or so. The Houston Texans signed Vikings defensive end Daniil Hunter to a two-year deal worth up to $51 million, with 48 of it guaranteed. He's coming off of a career high, 16 and a half sacks last year. He's got 87 and a half sacks on his career. He'll turn 30 in October. And supposedly, Nick Casario talked him down from looking for 30 million annually to about 24 and a half, 25 and a half, which is pretty interesting considering there was a market for his services. Maybe not in Minnesota anymore with the Vikings signing former Texans defensive end Jonathan Grenard. But from what I understand, the Colts were supposedly interested. Maybe it's Nick Casario. Maybe it's a hometown discount. He's from Katy. He went to Morton Ranch High School, but. If this isn't a splash, and if this doesn't get you excited, I don't know what to tell you. Even I'm excited. And generally, I don't like big splash signings in free agency. As I said yesterday, this is generally the shit that people like me, who grew up Patriots fans, laugh at the teams who spend big. But then look at the deal. It is not a deal that locks the Houston Texans in for a while. It is another classic Casario move because the man loves giving out two-year contracts. And now in just a couple of days, the Houston Texans defensive line has gone from a question mark, one where you almost felt pressure to re-signing Jonathan Grenard because you're not sure you're going to be able to find that production elsewhere, at least at a bargain with what, Justin Matabuike made with what Christian Wilkins made. But between Daniil Hunter and Danico Autry, who you signed to a two-year $20 million deal, you are replacing Jonathan Grenard's 12 and a half sacks with 28 sacks. From what I understand, they're going to be able to throw more varied alignments at the offenses that they go up against. Will Anderson and Hunter are going to be on the edge. Autry, who is a little older, can go on the interior as a sub rusher. You have Malik Collins still. You brought back Khalil Davis, who was pretty good. You signed Foley Fatukasi. And you might not be done because per Cody Davis, who was one of the first guys on the Joe Mixon trade, which we'll get to later. Shout out to Cody for getting that. Noise is brewing between the Houston Texans and Chase Young. The Titans are going to meet with him, I guess, tomorrow. So your defensive line is looking very good right now. Could more moves happen? I'm a little skeptical about more moves on the defensive line. But the defensive line has gone from being a unit where... You were happy with the production you got last year, but you always felt you could do better. It has gotten better. How much better? We'll see, but it has clearly improved 
over the last 24 hours. Let's read some comments. YouTube.com slash Paul Gallant on X at Gallant says. Twitch.tv slash Gallant says as well. Andrew Van Loen says Nick cooked. Wow, Spartacus comments. Let Nick cook some tweets. Joseph Daly, I hated all the coverage yesterday. I was ready to set my phone on fire listening to Houston sports. Was it because of the frustration from fans? I'm assuming so because I did start off this live stream asking if you were a grumpy little panda that wasn't getting their bamboo yesterday. Suraj comments, sup, Paul? Good day to be a Texans fan, huh? Eric Armstead next. Quandre Diggs. Justin Simmons. Diggs is the one I want. Diggs is the one that I think will be at a reasonable rate as far as safeties between he and Justin Simmons. Eric Armstead, I think you have to wait for him to officially be released, which will probably happen tomorrow. El Compa Gouch Podcast says, Nick Casario equals Jeff Luno. Let's not go quite that far, but Casario's done a good job since coming here. No, and I know a lot of you people don't like we Patriots, folks. See all the Patriots shit behind me? But if you've been listening to me since Casario took over, I've been a fan of what he could do, and I've been a fan of what he has done. Because it's not just what he's done over the last calendar year. It's also what he had to clean up after Bill O'Brien, Jack Easterby really did a bad job of ensuring the Texans be able to compete in the future. And obviously the Deshaun Watson bullshit, both uh, in the organization where he didn't want to play anymore and uh, the off the field stuff as well with all the sexual misconduct allegations against him. That didn't help either, but he's done a damn good job of cleaning things up. And I really think a lot of you owe apologies. I, I saw some people that are saying, Oh, well, I have a right to be frustrated. It was one fucking day, guys. It was one day. I, I get that a lot of you guys are new here to like following a contending football team, and I'm sorry for being patronizing, but y- I want to get you up to speed with me, okay? Like <laughs> The first day of free agency, shit happens, but there are other days of free agency as well. And, and I'll, be su- I'll be honest, I- I'm surprised that the Texans did do this with Daniil Hunter. I am. But this was not apparently the only thing that they were trying to do on the defensive line. Uh, Some other rumors. Per Patrick Storm, they tried to trade for Brian Burns, who the Giants gave that huge deal to. Uh, They went after Saquon Barkley, but they had a limit. They went after Patrick Queen, but they had a limit. So they've been very aggressive here. And, okay, they clearly believe in the idea that if you got a quarterback on a rookie contract, you got to spend if you can. And... You know, I I had a series of tweets this morning before I went on Fox 26, or after I went on Fox 26, responding to the idea that a lot of people were were commenting yesterday here, talking about how it's a bit overstated that you have to win a Super Bowl on a rookie contract. Part of that's because of just how successful both Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes have been. Um, Brady and Mahomes have uh, combined, I think, 10 appearances in the last 13, maybe it was 14 Super Bowls. And there have been some quarterbacks who won Super Bowls on rookie deals. Joe Flacco in 2013, Russell Wilson in 2014, Patrick Mahomes in 2020, and some other quarterbacks made the Super Bowl while on a rookie deal. Kaepernick in 2013, Russell Wilson in 15, Jared Goff in 19, Burrow, Hurts, Purdy the last three years. But... I think it's a little bit overstated. What you really need to do is have a good quarterback, and having a good quarterback allows you to make sacrifices at certain positions, including on offense, where the Texans did not need to really invest that much more money. I know a lot of people wanted extra wide receivers. I know a lot of people wanted a running back, and we'll talk about Joe Mixon a little bit later, someone like a Saquon Barkley, or it was a Josh Jacobs, or it was somebody else. But when you have someone like C.J. Stroud, that allows you to invest in other positions, because the quarterback, it is his job to raise the level of the offense around him if he is at the level that we believe C.J. Stroud can one day be. 
And if you took a look at the salary cap hits for the Texans offensively this season compared with the salary cap hits for the Texans defensively this coming season, there's a massive discrepancy. It was like 122 before yesterday's action to 59. 122 for the offense, 59 for the defense. So now that flips a little bit with the big deals that have been given out. And that's pretty damn exciting. You should be excited today. The frustration yesterday, I thought it was over the top. I thought you guys needed to relax. But be excited today. I'm excited. I mean, there is a part of me (laughs) that is a little bit concerned about how excited I am. There is a consensus opinion out there right now that the Texans outright won the offseason. It started on ESPN late on Monday with a Bill Barnwell post who said that the Texans' defense is winners for what they did, for signing Danico Autry, for signing Aziz al Shair, bringing in Jeff Okuda on a let's-see-what-happens kind of deal, uh, Foley Fatukasi. Tommy Townsend to replace Cam Johnston, in addition to re-signing Dalton Schultz, re-signing Noah Brown, uh, bringing back Khalil Davis, bringing back Desmond King, uh, Kaimi Fairbairn, I guess Eric Murray. I don't know about Eric Murray, but... The Texans made the defense even better today by bringing in a guy who had 16 and a half fucking sacks last year. And now I I find myself concerned by how many people are complimenting the Houston Texans and what they've done in free agency. I'm, I'm just going through a couple of them. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Emmanuel Acho complimenting him. I think he did it with a video. I'll be honest. I don't want to watch the video. I don't want to watch that video. Uh, you've got, on top of that, uh, Diana Rossini saying, the Texans have done work. Peter Schrager, culture. Didn't seem like the Texans had a lot of fun playing for their head coach last year. The offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, special teams coordinator had a ton of juice. That's real. In a matter of one season, Houston's gone from an also ran to a free agent destination, and yes, D'Amico's that guy. Field Yates, the Texans' defense is going to be so nasty next year. Will Compton said before these deals happened that the Texans had won free agency. So many compliments. It's weird. There's a part of me that thinks, wait, there's so many people agreeing that the Texans won free agency on day two with what they've done that, uh, wait, wait, what's up here? Something's wrong. (laughs) And maybe having been here since, for the most part, uh, for for most of the last 12, 13 years or so, uh, maybe you guys are rubbing off on me a little bit where I'm expecting the other shoe to drop for the football team. So to, to reset what happened, uh, we, we, we went through all of those moves that they made. And over the course of the last calendar year, 2023 free agency, they brought in Dalton Schultz. They brought in Shaq Mason, Sheldon Rankins, Devin Singletary, Noah Brown, Steven Nelson, Denzel Perriman. Um, in addition to Robert Woods, if you really want to add him into the mix, they won the draft. CJ Stroud and Will Anderson, yes, but Drew Scruggs, uh, Tank Dell, you even got some contributions out of Jarrett Patterson a little bit later on. And, and now I you might have won back-to-back off-season events. The 2023 draft, 2024 free agency. It's impressive. And Nick Casario, if you haven't given him a little bit of faith, I think you need to give him a little bit of faith. And I know some of you people out there, you're way, way, way into the mock draft shit. I am not. It's too much of a crapshoot for me. But if the Texans don't do what you want in the draft, maybe this is the time to sit back and say, you know what? I'm going to let him do what he wants to do. And, and yeah, the draft's a crapshoot. He might not He might not have a good draft this, this time around. And, and there are still some holes that the Texans need to fill. I, I think they need a safety who's not going to let guys get past them. Is that going to be Lonnie Johnson? I've said I want Quandre Diggs. I know others want Justin Simmons. Do they have a starting corner opposite Derek Stingley? What's the deal with Steven Nelson? But they are better today, and you should be happy. Let's read some more comments. Rick Hagwood says, looking like a top five defense in 2024. I think that's going to be tricky, and that's mainly because of the teams that they play this coming year. Now, 
some of the games have gotten a little bit easier, specifically their game against the Vikings since Kirk Cousins has left for the Atlanta Falcons. The <laughs> Patriots do not have a quarterback right now unless you consider Jacoby Brissett that guy, but they will go up against Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Tua Dungavailoa, possibly Caleb Presley. Wait, hang on. Caleb Williams. Um, I keep on saying Caleb Presley for some reason. Possibly Caleb Williams with the Chicago Bears. Uh, Jared Goff, a healthy Anthony Richardson. Trevor Lawrence, who's at least decent. Will Levis in his second year. Those are the games that they play at NRG Stadium. And then, on the road, Richardson again, Lawrence again, Levis again, Patrick Mahomes, a possibly healthy Aaron Rodgers, Jordan Love coming off of the second half of the year that he just had, and Dak Prescott. So it's going to be tough for them to statistically be a top five defense, but they are better, and that's enough. Um, more comments here. YouTube.com slash Paul Gallant. Jacob Byers is saying, always trust Chef Nick. He also continues saying, a lot of y'all Fairweather fans was crying so bad last night. Hope y'all had your diapers changed today. I'm okay with the Fairweather fan side of things, but when you are overreacting to a lack of action in free agency, to me, it screams you're new to this. A couple of years from now, I hope that you're well-educated, specifically by me, born winner, because I jump on bandwagons, but also because I grew up a Patriots fan, and you know. Uh, it's hard life. It's hard life being better than everybody. But I kid. I hope that you guys will start to look at this time of year in the same way that I do. But the Texans did make some big moves today. I'm surprised by it. I don't know if I would have done what Nick Casario did. And I respect the chutzpah, for lack of a better term. Uh, Jared Lirett asks, do you think they can bring back Sheldon Rankins? I don't think it's impossible I think you have to ask Rankins what he's going to want now, though. Like He definitely could be a rotational piece, but if Khalil Davis is back, you're bringing Autry in the middle. Malik Collins is there already. Is he going to want to come back? I would think that this team does become a little bit more attractive to the point where maybe he takes a little bit less money to play here. Torvik Johnson says, I've been a Nick Dick rider since day one. Well, that's that's a personal choice. Uh, Jeremy Gonzalez asks, who you think we're going to get for the offense? They don't need anyone for the offense outside of maybe another running back, which you can get in the draft. I have not given up on Damian Pierce outside of maybe a veteran interior offensive lineman. But... I don't think that they're going to be doing a whole lot more offensively. I don't think they're getting another wide receiver. I think Noah Brown, along with Nico Collins and Tank Dell, that's a pretty good one, two, three. I know we all want to have an amazing number three wide receiver, and maybe with a lack of depth at running back, that makes you feel like you're going to need to have um, three wide receivers on the field at all times. Um, I believe that's 11 personnel. Look at me, Mr. NFL guy. But I think with the way... that they have addressed the offensive line and with the amount of money that they're spending on that position and just with the amount of money invested in the offense as things currently stand, I think it's going to be really difficult to look at the budget and say, let's add some more on offense. But the defense should be better. Uh, NJ Fuentes, respecter, says, who is this Co-D Davis? No, it's Co-T Davis with a T. Uh, Rick Hagwood says, move Keenum onto the coaching staff. I don't know. Keenum might still be your backup quarterback. Uh, more comments here. Behannon on twitch.tv slash Galan says, says, what up? Uh, Twan Wynn says, people are lamenting we didn't sign Saquon Barkley, named the last three Super Bowl teams. with a top running back, I believe Terrell Davis and Emmett Smith in the 90s are, are two of those teams. Um... NJ Fuentes' respecter is pushing back, saying they lost the Super Bowl with a top running back, but they lost to a generational talent. That is a fair point. Uh, Mr. Robot says, I have a great show. That's all that matters. Thank you for kissing my ass, Mr. Robot. I appreciate that. Um, 
Rick Hagwood, once Nick got control of personnel with a good partner and a head coach, Nick is smoking. I agree. Uh, the only place Casario sucks, says Jason Wagner, you shouldn't have faith, is the offensive line selection. They need to outsource their offensive line selections to someone else. Everywhere else in Nick we trust. Well, I, I wouldn't overreact too much to the Kenyon, to the Kenyon Green um, pick because I think Juice Scruggs played well last year. Like, you're going to miss on some guys that you draft. Um, I thought Scruggs played well. I think Shaq Mason played well. I think Titus Howard was out of position most of the year when he was healthy. He was unhealthy a lot of it. And, okay, Laramie Tunsil, not a guy he brought in. And, and Titus Howard also a previous... Um, um, acquisition, but I, I I don't think he has been a disaster as far as offensive line uh, acquisitions. Uh, do 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 do. Uh, Gerald Varegis says, "What's the chance that the Texans may trade back given the really good free agent additions?" I don't think it has anything to do with the free agent additions as much as it has to do with what their draft board is. If a player that they wanted is off their draft board, they might be likely to trade back from twenty three. So there you go. Uh, Texas Tax, thanks for the donation. Appreciate that. Uh, what else do we have? Alpha Turtle says, I'm so excited about the Texans. I'm going to H-E-B to steal a potted flower plant again. So you steal f- potted pl- flower plants. I suppose, suppose I'm not endorsing it. I'm not endorsing that. You know what? I'm not even going to say. I suppose that would be easy to do, given that the potted plants are generally on the outside. Um, I did want to touch on the Joe Mixon trade as well today. And I know that they are better with Joe Mixon. They traded a conditional seventh-round pick for him. He is not going to cost them a lot. It does, to me, feel like they ran out of options at the price point they wanted. Everyone was going for $8 million or so, $7 million or so. They did not sign Derrick Henry. Uh, they did not sign Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, Aaron Jones. Instead, they got Mixon, who I think is a damn versatile running back. He had last year 257 carries for 1,034 yards, nine touchdowns, 52 catches for 376 yards, and three touchdowns. The Bengals instead have signed Zach Moss, who was the Colts' leading rusher while Jonathan Taylor was injured and had a pretty good season to a cheaper salary. The Bengals are cheap. Maybe they're trying to free up space to give T. Higgins an extension or something like that. Higgins has demanded a trade. But I I thought it was weird that the Bengals were talking about releasing Joe Mixon given his cap hit was minimal. Like, it wasn't that much. And that's a lot of production to replace. I mean, that's 300 touches. He's in a 1,000-yard rusher. He played all 17 games, and he can catch the football. So, one, I'm wondering if the Texans ran out of options and Joe Mixon was their fallback plan. Two, I'm wondering why the Bengals got rid of him. And three, and I know this is going to piss some people off. You can take a look at the comments section in the Gallant and George video that I posted a little bit earlier today. I got a lot of people that, and I believe that it's it's a racially charged argument that seem to be mad at me because I took a look at Joe Mixon's past. But I don't know how you can't. If you haven't seen the video of Joe Mixon punching a woman at Oklahoma, you got to watch it. And I know what happened when he was 18. I know that it happened nearly a decade ago. And that there is room for growth for someone like that. But as I said 10 years ago, I still feel the same way. It should be a privilege to play a professional sport. You can have plenty of second chances in life to do other things. But if you are going to be violent with another human being, especially when you are athlete-sized, strong, powerful, and you're doing it to somebody who is weaker than you, no matter if the situation had been escalated by her, as some have argued on the video, as a running back at Oklahoma, which he was at the time, you can't fucking do that. It's bad judgment. Have we all made bad decisions when we're 18? Yes. But the idea that all mistakes are the same is fucking stupid. It's fucking stupid. 
We all do make mistakes. Yes. Do not try to equate a mistake like this with others. Violent mistakes should be treated differently, even if someone atones for it. He broke bones in her face, and it resulted in hospitalization and surgery. I saw some people commenting that he was acting in self-defense. He's a fucking college football running back. She is a girl, no matter if she escalated the situation. Here's what supposedly happened in that incident. Some of his teammates were harassing the woman who was punched and her friend outside a store. This is what the report says. Surveillance video shows Mixon follow the woman inside the store. They begin arguing. She pushes and slaps his face. Mixon punches her, calling her to fall into a table. And then he walked out. Four broken bones in her face. She claims Mixon used a homophobic slur towards her friend. After Mixon followed them into the store, Mixon claimed that he, uh, that the person he directed a homophobic slur at had directed a racial slur at him, and he responded as such, and it escalated to this. I know it happened in 2014, but it did happen And it's surprising that the Houston Texans, who a lot of people would bitch and moan about them being too Boy Scout heavy on the roster. It is surprising that the Houston Texans would do this. It is. During the era of Bob McNair, this is something they wouldn't have done. Is that right? Is that wrong? I don't know, but I was cool with it. There are lots of teams that look the other way. My Patriots did it with Aaron Hernandez when they drafted him. That didn't work out too well. The Chiefs did it with Tyreek Hill. I suppose limiting who you bring on a roster because of some sense of morality is not doing everything necessary to win. So maybe this is a philosophical thing. But I don't know. I think you do something like that. Sorry. Should have shown better judgment there. It's a privilege to play in the NFL. It's a privilege to play a sport for a living. I do think that while... Maybe it's unfair some of the expectations that we put on athletes as far as being upstanding citizens. I I feel like we should have a minimum expectation of not being an asshole, right? But okay, that was 10 years ago. Maybe I should allow a man to grow. You would think someone would grow over 10 years. But that's where it gets a little bit weird because in the last calendar year, there are two incidents, and at the very least, it makes you scratch your head, especially considering... The Bengals were going to either release him or ultimately trade him for nothing given the production he had this past year. In February 23, it was alleged that he pulled a gun on a woman in Cincinnati. And then the next month, there was a shots fired call at Mixon's home with an injured child on the scene. He wasn't arrested or charged. Prosecutors charged his sister and boyfriend. So you can look at those situations. You could say, oh, well, all right, he didn't face any time for what happened in February 23. But remember, NFL players have money, and when you have money, you're going to do very well in an American court. You are. It is not as fair as we would like it to be. When you have money and you have access to better lawyers, very often you are going to win, or at the very least, Find a way to keep yourself out of trouble, especially with the backlogs in cases that we have across the United States. And with the March incident, look, I don't know much more than there was a shots fired call at Mixon's home, but we're talking about a gun incident allegation a month before, and then this happens a month later. So fishy, to say the least. I'm not happy the Texans made this move, but I will acknowledge that they got better by making this move, and I think they're going to need to add a little bit more at running back. I'm sure the comments section is completely calm and rational after that spot. Uh, Let's read them. YouTube.com slash Paul Gallant. Twitch.tv slash Gallant says hang on a second let me scroll through this i'm with joe fuck it he my running back number one now 
okay, I guess. Um, Chandler says she low-key deserved it. Does anyone deserve to get punched in the face as hard as that girl got punched in the face? By an athlete. I get it. He's 18. He's young in that situation. But, I mean, he wound up. He hit her hard. And he walked away. Probably thinking he would be able to get away from it. uh, From that situation. What happens if there's no surveillance video there? He just gets away with it? We're not talking about this. That's probably a thing. Uh, More comments here. Uh, NJ Fuentes, respecter. Why is it racially biased to defend woman, uh, women? I, I, I felt like a lot of the people that were commenting, and, and a couple of them like just put the accusation out there, like saying, like, well, you wouldn't be talking about this if this was a white person. No, if there was video of it, we would be talking about it no matter who it was. And, and this, the, the game of whataboutism that a lot of people play with stuff like this. Well, what about Ben Roethlisberger? What about Ben Roethlisberger? It's a totally different, different story what happened in Millersville, Georgia, where it, it seems there's a very good chance that he got away with some sort of sexual assault, right? I mean, the NFL definitely thought something was up there. So do I need to bring up every case that has ever happened with every athlete ever Whenever I'm bringing up a specific case, I shouldn't have to do that. I shouldn't have to waste my time. And it, and it does feel like there's a racial element when you, when you bring up stories like this where someone says that I'm going after a person because they're black. I'm not going after a person because they're black. I'm not. I'm just telling you what happened. That happened. It's on video. You can't deny it. And you can't say, well, what about all these other guys? We're talking about a guy who's on the Houston Texans right now. It would take me a really fucking long time to list the many athletes who have beaten a woman. It would it would take a while, unfortunately. You know, and it's it's weird that that gets brought up. It's weird that that gets used as a counter argument. Um, comments. Uh, Jose Viatoro says, "Why are you bringing up his past? Because that's part of the fucking story, and it's surprising that the Texans brought him in." I had somebody else during the radio show today say, like, oh, man, you bring up some negative energy. No, man, this is my job. <laughs> we talk about the full package here. It is surprising that the Texans brought the guy in. This is a part of the story, that they're looking the other way on this. I'm sure they did their due diligence, but, I mean, they're trading for a guy on another roster. Have they had long sit-downs with him talking about this before making the trade? You're not allowed to do that. The trade happens, and, and then you have those conversations. Uh, Mr. Robot says, I don't like Boy Scout only teams. You got to have a few, every once in a while, a few players with an edge. Yeah, but does does the edge need to be punching the shit out of a woman? Or maybe not being the most responsible with guns? Uh, John Ryan says, could not care less. Uh, we got some more bad comments. Jesus Christ. Uh, some people are saying the high character guys will lift Mixon up. Well, uh, that might be an overstatement as well. Like, Mixon very well could have learned from that incident in 2014. Like, I, I don't know who he is as a person. I hope he's grown from it. I hope he's learned from it. But the two incidents that happened in 2023 that, and, and the fact that the Bengals were willing to part ways with him, I'm suspicious. Why were the Bengals tired of a guy that was still producing for them that wasn't expensive? Uh... NJ Fuentes, respecter, says that guy on Jay Pun and Joel argued for Mixon. Yeah, that, that guy fucking sucks. He will not let you actually have a conversation um, with you. He constantly talks over you and he bitches and moans when you try to go back and forth with him. And then he just talks all over the place and makes all sorts of nonsensical points. Like one time he was talking about like T-Rex arm quarterbacks. I had no idea what the fuck he was talking about. Um, anyway, uh, YouTube.com slash Paul Gallant. Twitch.tv slash... Galant says, um, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Simple as that. I, well, what's the stupid game? What, what if your friend, if, if someone called your friend something you didn't want to hear, you're, you're not going to stick up for them, especially when a little bit of alcohol is involved. Cause from the sound of things, that's how that incident in 2014 escalated. 
Uh, some people are bringing up Ray Rice on the Twitch. B. Hannon. Um, Kareem Hunt is another one. Yeah, that that incident in uh, Las Vegas, right? Um, Ray did get blackballed. I also think that his skill was deteriorating to the point where no one was going to give him another chance. But the video, I imagine, also led to perhaps a little bit of NFL collusion and a blackballing. So, yeah. Um, some people are bringing up Roberto Osuna. Mm-hmm. Uh, do the Texans want to be the Patriots of the South so bad that we got a podcaster who's a New England fan? Listen, I've just been here a while. I've just been here a while, you know? I, I remember when, when I first went to uh, school, Syracuse University, like the only thing I wanted to do was to host a sports radio show in Boston, uh, which is where I grew up. But I haven't lived in Boston for a year straight since I was 14. Uh, for those who don't know, my parents had a really ugly divorce when I was about 12, and ultimately... It led to me and my mom moving down to St. Pete, Florida, and my dad and my sister staying up in Massachusetts. It was a lot. The fact that everyone seems to have come out of a complete schism in the family with people living over a thousand miles apart and be successful and happy for the most part still shocks me. But I haven't lived in Massachusetts for like a full year since... I was 14, so I grew up a massive Patriots fan, and I still was a diehard Patriots fan in college and watched them from afar, but I've been in Houston, which was my first job, from 2011 to 2019, in Seattle for like two years, and I came right back here, and when you live away from the place where you were born and grew up, and specifically you're covering sports on a daily basis in another city, you will be surprised by, one, like how... Difficult it is just to keep up with the old teams. My job is to cover the teams here, and I like watching the teams here. And over time, you actually become fans of them if they're good enough. That's why I jumped on the Astros bandwagon. Red Sox did some bullshit, which made it easier. But, I mean, with the way the Patriots are right now, I I don't know if I can ever, in good conscience, abandon the Patriots as my number one team. But don't get it twisted. I see this regularly in the comments. I mean, as someone who's lived here for like 12 years almost, someone who's lived here for a while, I want to see the Texans do well. There's this weird idea, oh, you weren't born here. Well, you you can't support them. This is a city of transplants. What the fuck are you talking about? And, And since this team is good, you should encourage more people that live here, that move here, to jump aboard. What's wrong with having more fans? I, I, I see nothing wrong with it. I, I think this is a very welcoming city. We're going to be territorial on that. And I get maybe the idea that I have a job in sports radio over, over other people in the city that are actually from here. And, and you know what? Okay, I'll, I'll actually listen to that one. Like, I am really fucking good at this. <laughs> but I get that. He's a damn carpetbagger. But at this point, I've been here long enough and know the history of this city and the sports here well enough that I feel like I've earned my place here. Now, with sports radio changing as much as it does <laughs> on a year-to-year basis, like I, I still got to update the bottom line because I got a brand new show. Um, who knows how long I'll be in this current spot? I, I hope for a while. I, I, I like this new show that I'm doing with Joe. We'll obviously keep doing this. Maybe there's, you know, something else down the road. Um, but like, I don't want to leave here again. I want to keep covering sports here. And sorry to go on this long tangent, but it does bother me a little bit of people getting mad about, like, this idea that, like, I, I wasn't born here. Oh, we can't talk about this team. I don't know. I, I feel like having watched the Patriots, it almost gives me, like, a... a master, um, like a master's degree in following a successful team for 20 years and and what they did to stay successful for 20 years. And and guess what? Nick Casario was there for much of those 20 years. 
And it's one of the reasons that I thought it was a good hire when they brought him in. Uh, let's scroll through. YouTube.com slash Paul Gallant. Twitch.tv slash Gallant says, Andrew Thompson asks, are you a Houston sports fan now or no? For the most part, yes. I like the Rockets a lot more now that there's no James Harden. I fucking hated that, those teams. I hated them. I just don't like the way Harden plays. And part of it's because, like, when I watch basketball, I, I kind of like the basketball teams I watch to play football. <laughs> and maybe that I, I've really come to enjoy um, some of the athletic players the Rockets brought in this year. Amon Thompson and, and Cam Whitmore. Especially Cam Whitmore. It sucks that he, he's going to be out for three weeks with that knee injury. So I, I like seeing these guys push people around. But the Astros, I have 100% been on the bandwagon since 2015. I was dating somebody who worked for the Astros in 2015. And uh, that summer, just because of the fact that she was working for them, I paid a lot more attention to them than I had in the years before. When I was over at Sports Radio 610, and I was there from 2011 to 2019, for a while, they basically told us not to talk about the Astros. And I don't blame them for a while. But when the Astros got good, it was very easy for me to jump, also because of some of the stuff that the Red Sox do. I know the Red Sox have been very successful. They've got the, the four World Series titles since 2004. But the Red Sox do this bullshit when people are, uh, when they're done with people there, they, they tend to smear them on the way out. And there were so many guys that like I grew up rooting for that they did that to. Nomar, Pedro Martinez, Terry Francona. And I, I hated the way that they portrayed them. And then they started talking shit about the Patriots. And I was like, okay. And then there was a summer and I was already out by this point, but there was a summer where I was doing like Red Sox post game shows. And I, I just felt the Red Sox were very sensitive. So yeah. So there you go. For long answer. Uh, I root for all the teams in Houston sports to succeed. The Patriots and Celtics are still my two favorite sports teams. I got to keep some, some bit of my past with me, but would I be mad if the Texans beat the Patriots in a regular season game? No playoff game. I, I, I truly do not know. Uh, I would be mad if the Rockets beat the Celtics in a regular season game or in a playoff game, at least at this moment in time. Um, YouTube.com slash Paul Gallant, Twitch.tv slash Gallant says, Mario Gonzalez, good job. Keep it up. CJ's the next coming of Brady, if not better. I hope to see in a Super Bowl appearance in the near future. I do too. I, I, I really love Stroud. I can't say enough complimentary things about CJ Stroud. I think the guy is authentic, real. I respect the faith that he shows. He's not annoying with it. Uh, the faith that he has, not shows. Um, some people are annoying with it. I, I think for Carson Wentz, you'll, you'll read stories about how maybe he was a little bit too pushy with it in his own locker room. And, and Stroud's, Stroud's just authentic. He gives long, thoughtful answers. I hope he keeps giving those long, thoughtful answers. Um, and, yeah, I like him a lot. I, I think he's a, he's a stand-up guy. I think he's been through an incredible amount of adversity. To be able to overcome having a father in prison and and to go through some of the adversity that he did with his family, um, to hold on to that job at Ohio State, which is not easy, and to come into the NFL the way that he did, like I, I'm, I'm blown away by how good he was this past season. I, I, I've said it before. Like right now, there's only two quarterbacks for one game that I take over him. I know some people are going to get mad at me for saying Joe Burrow, but it's it's just Mahomes and Joe Burrow. That's it. That's it. That could totally change by the end of next season. Uh, Ruth Marino says, watch Damian Pierce have a breakout year. I wouldn't be shocked if that happened. I would not be shocked if that happened. I think the thing that you got to remember with Damian Pierce is that in 2022, on a team that had no one helping him out. It was like Davis Mills and just awful offense and issues on the offensive line. Pierce looked good. He has talent. It's a matter of can he be a little bit more patient as a running back? But you, you can't you can't just give up on it, you know? 
Uh, NJ Fuentes, Respector, talks about Alvin Kamara. Yeah, I forgot Alvin Kamara had an issue as well. There might have been video there. Um, do, 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 do. <laughs> Jay Texas says, you made Bill O'Brien mad. You're valid, Paul. There was a time where Bill O'Brien and I actually did get along, but then I, yeah. They, they, uh, they were playing the Patriots. And this was actually a moment where I watched a Texans-Patriots game early on in the year. The Patriots won. They were up two scores with about five minutes to go. And the Texans punted down two scores with five minutes. Now, the Patriots muffed the punt. The Texans recovered it, and it was a one-score game. But I thought it was such a beta-bitch move to punt down two scores to the Patriots with five minutes to play. Like, what are you doing? It's Tom Brady. What are you doing? It's crazy. Um, do, 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 Jason Wagner comments, youtube.com slash Paul Gallant. We especially need more fans because we are literally the only Houston market for football. There are no Texans fans outside of the Houston city limits. Yeah. And I think it's going to take time to convert some cowboy fans. I, I did find it interesting Growing up a Patriots fan where really the only Patriots fans were in New England for the longest time to over time seeing clearly bandwagon Patriots fans in other cities. You know, people jump on the bandwagons of a team that constantly wins all the time. And, and I don't blame people for doing it. I used to judge it, but I don't know. if you're. It's one thing to grow up in a place and, and you know have some sort of sense of community, but if the team like just blows for a long period of time in your in your hometown... I, I do think you have the right to call it quits. And I know some people maybe the last couple of years did that. Um Jose Villatero says, I suck. Nah, I'm pretty awesome, dude. Uh Juni713. Better than Nick Wright talking about the damn Chiefs while he was here. Shaking my head. Does I think there's somebody at 610 that does that right now. Um else did we go? Blah, 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 blah. Doobie doop, boop, boo, wop. Uh, OG from H Town says, I'm surprised you, Cody, and Jake don't do a collab since y'all all have a YouTube channel. Well, Cody's doing his own thing on the Texans. Uh, I know he and Landry collaborate from time to time. They've never asked to have me on. Maybe they don't respect my Texans' opinions. Maybe they think I'll get too off topic. Jake's pretty focused on the Jets. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I feel like I know way more about Houston sports than Jake does. And Jake was only here for a couple of years. So like, it's nothing against him. But Jake is clearly more focused on the Jets. And if I were to join these Jets conversations, I would just be a dick. <laughs> and talk about, you guys suck. Nothing you do matters. Blah, 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 blah. Um... AMT Chris says, Stroud has a bigger arm than Brady ever had. Brady's arm got better over time, but Stroud makes some effortless throws. Uh, Michael Street says, I lived in Houston my whole life. I still rock the 86 Larry Bird jersey. Hang on, let me show you something. I actually wore the Larry Bird jersey today, if you saw on my YouTube channel. Let me show you something, though. So, uh, the, the first... Sports game I ever went to was a Boston Celtics game in, I want to say, I want to say January or February of 1996. And we go to this bar outside of the Fleet Center. And I'm six years old, so we're not actually at the bar, but we're at the restaurant part of it. And it's me and my dad. And my dad sees a very tall person in there. Uh, I had just watched a VHS tape of Larry Bird, who was not playing with the Celtics anymore, and I was blown away by how awesome he was. And I was a young kid, but I was psychotic about sports at this moment in time. So my dad sees Larry Bird, who was famously like not the nicest to, um, you know, like adults. But my dad says, like, hey, uh, my son is a huge fan of yours. So Larry Bird came over to our table he said, uh, he asked, like, hey, Paul, you going to scream and cheer? Tonight's game. I, I don't remember what I said. I just remember I was blown away. Like, oh, my God, this is Larry Bird. So we got a picture taken together. We knew somebody that worked at the Boston Garden, and they had the picture blown up, and uh, Larry Bird autographed it. And there's there I am. I know that light's kind of shining in the way, but uh, there I am 
me and uh, <laughs> Larry Bird, who is a very tall fucking guy. It was the coolest thing ever. And I became a diehard Larry Bird fan for life. And a diehard Celtics fan for life through that. Um, being at Tom Brady's first game ever as well, like, that, that keeps me there too. Uh, YouTube.com slash Paul Gallant. Twitch.tv slash Gallant says, Ricky B says that he converted a few Cowboys fans in Rio Grande Valley. That's interesting. Joe Duke says, I'm out here in Baltimore, and every time I wear my merch, people say, I've never met a Texans fan. Yeah, Baltimore's a weird place for a Texans fan. That's, that's certainly true. But I would imagine now that, like, there's got to be some people that think C.J. Stroud's cool. Ohio's probably going to get some Texans fans with what Stroud's been able to do, and especially now that Michigan seems to have the upper hand on Ohio State. Is that going to continue? Post Jim Harbaugh, we'll see. Uh, Sid Cantor asks, Texans overall free Asian grade two days in. I, I still think they need a corner and a safety, but I am willing to give them. Am I going to do it? Am I going to do it? Mm, I hate giving out an A. I'm going to give them a B plus. <laughs> People are going to get mad at me. How about an A minus? Will you take that? I feel like sometimes the grades that are online are a little bit too generous, but. No, they added they added 28 sacks after Jonathan Grenard's 12 and a half lot left. Their defensive front is better. They, I think, upgraded over Blake Cashman at middle linebacker. We'll see how good um, Aziz Al Zaire is in coverage. Um, they need another corner. They need a safety. So I'll, I'll give them a 90. Uh, blah 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 blah. Do ba doop boop doo wop. Shibble dee doop. Uh, Jason Wagner says, I like Paul for entertainment. I like Stutes for straight shoot information. Yeah, that's totally fair. Totally fair. Uh, someone told me to log off. AMT Chris says, Larry Bird is not the greatest of all time. Well, I didn't argue he's the greatest of all time. He's just my favorite. Um, <laughs> OG from H-Town. Fun fact, Paul never grew more after that Larry Bird picture, and it's still a cock level. No, I'm, I'm 5'11 and a half, but on my license it says I'm six feet tall. So how about that? Anyway, uh, that's going to wrap up our comments. Um, <laughs> El Compe Guache podcast says, no A plus because no Barkley. They did get outbid for Barkley. It was enough money, though, where I understand why they, they, they stood pat. Um, thanks for stopping by. Um, we'll put this up in audio form in a little bit. Uh, remember we typically do this Monday and Thursday nights. I don't think we'll be doing one tomorrow, barring unforeseen circumstances. I've got a busy day tomorrow that involves a bunch of um, meetings that I have to go to. And also I'm going to go see the Nickelback concert at the rodeo. If something major happens, we'll do a really late episode. Um, I, I would be surprised if another big move happens for the Texans in the next 24 hours, but I, I've already been pretty surprised by what they've done to this point. Got to be happy about what they've done and you got to give Nick Casario credit and I'm not going to stay mad at the people who were impatient yesterday. I, I, I get the impatience and, and maybe I was a little bit too condescending with some of you, but I hope that everybody has newfound faith in not just CJ Stroud and D'Amico Ryan's, but Nick Casario as well. It, it is a pretty good day to be a Houston Texans fan. Uh, that that defensive line got significantly better in the past 24 to 48 hours. Anyway, guys, appreciate y'all stopping by. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like the video on YouTube. We might have some shorts out later. It really depends on how lazy I am. Uh, if you haven't subscribed on Twitch, you're more of a Twitch person, twitch.tv slash Gallant says I'm on Twitter at Gallant says as well. I have an Instagram account at sports Gallant and I'm on TikTok too at Gallant says if you want to hear this in audio form, Apple podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher and SoundCloud. It's available for free if you haven't already. And if you are a podcast person, subscribe, Leave a rating, a review, a roast. I don't give a shit. I just want you to listen. Just pay attention to me. So long. Farewell. Have yourselves a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. And 
just stay tuned for potential Galant Says podcast popping up in your face. Anyway.